my guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for joining um so if you had seen my previous video um this is just a continuation of that um we're doing the 10 pros and cons of living in the isle of man versus south africa um so in my previous video we did the pros of living in the isle of man versus south africa we're going to do the cons of living in the isle of man versus south africa um so before we get into it just a tiny bit of a disclaimer <laughs> so this is basically just our points of view from what we've experienced thus far living here um I, it's nothing personal it's not an attack on anyone or anything or any shape or form it's just a perspective it's simply just what we've noticed what we've experienced and nothing is said to create any drama or anything like that So the first con that we find is the weather. <laughs> <laughs> so South Africa has amazing weather. We have like three months of winter and the rest of the time is gorgeous, sunny, warm, hot, scorching weather in South Africa. Whereas here... You can explain. <laughs> it's cold. It's cold. It's windy. <coughs> the days, the actual... It's cold. Yeah, so <laughs> so unlike mainland UK where it snows a lot, it rains a lot, it's grey cloudy skies and it's cold, we have the cold and we have the wind. We don't have so much the rain. It does rain a lot. It rains a lot. Uh, but it's sunny a lot. Okay. Yeah. And but the, the sun doesn't warm you up. Yeah, no. The one thing that I've noticed <laughs> is, which boggled my mind in the beginning, was that you actually want it to be cloudy. Yeah. Because it's warmer. Because it <laughs> congests everything. Once that cloud cover clears and it's a bright blue day, all that heat escapes and it is it's freezing. cold. And... It's not like you can stand in the sun like how you do on a winter's day in South Africa. And warm up, yeah. And you warm up like you're a lizard or something. The sun does You can't nothing. do that, yeah. You stand outside, you get cold. It doesn't matter if the sun is out. So. But the houses are warm now. The houses are I mean, you can see on, on Yeah, my hair is wet. Shirt, yeah. It's, you've got houses are well insulated. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's and like the kids, warm indoors. The kids don't seem to worry too much about the cold i mean yes if they're if we're on the beach and they're playing with the sand then you know mia will start to say her hands are feeling a little bit chilly or whatever but i think it's it's more harder for adults to adapt to weather conditions than it is for children so yeah but it's it's cold like i must be honest in my previous video i said i've been here five months it's been five months of cold unless i'm indoors so and don't forget, I came from winter in South Africa. So it's just, yeah, no. The weather is something we are getting used to. Anyway. So number two is, how do I say this word? Bureaucracy. The bureaucracy of the Bureaucracy. So, Edit that out. Okay. So, okay. So okay. What do you say it again? Number two. Can you do it? Okay, so, so so number two of cons is the the bureaucracy of uh, <laughs> <laughs> take three. <Yeah. laughs> okay, so con number two is the bureaucracy of the island. Uh, I think it's the UK in uh, general. So. Oh, wait, wait. Not necessarily the UK in general. Because I'm German. I'm half German. Yeah, okay. And so, the lengths that I had to go through so to get first, our passport. First world country. First world country. Bureaucracy. <laughs> it's, I mean, coming from a place where there was always... A loophole. A loophole or a backdoor or something <laughs> needs something done quickly. Here, that doesn't work. No. It's... If... You need 
a piece of paper to go from here to there and there's got to be four people need to sign it on the way um, there's no speeding it up it'll take if they say it's going to take three weeks it's going to take three weeks if they say it's, it's going to take three months it'll take three, it'll take months. three months it's just no it's everything has to follow the paper trail yeah and nobody deviates from it no and look it's not necessarily a terrible thing because like we said in the previous thing it, organization it does work it does work however like we say if it takes six months that's it there is no way that you are getting anything sooner mm. The, one of the biggest problems that we found uh, was in regards to the work visas when we came or to permits. the island. Or it's the not work, an actual visa. The work permits, yeah. yeah. So, so basically what it, what it means is that, um, or what our understanding was when we left South Africa to come through to the Isle of Man, was that once you're here and you settled and, and you're a foreigner and and you've got proof of residence and like all of that you can yeah. then apply for your work permit and when granted it you can then apply for any job that's not that's the case not the case at all what it um basically for a non-manx citizen um so for foreigners who live on the Isle of Man, who don't fall under the uh, exempt rule, uh, you need to have a work permit for the first five years. Now, your job that you have applies for your work permit. Yeah. So Each job that you have, yeah. you need a new work permit. Yeah. Unless you work for the same company for five years. Yeah. Then the work permit falls away and you don't need a work permit again after that. But mm. say I have a job now and I don't and they've gone and applied for the work permit for me and I've been granted it and all of that stuff. Can I say, start working? say yeah, and I've started working and I don't like the job or there's a problem or I get offered a new job and I want to go to a new job, that whole process starts over again. Mm. You need to reapply for the work permit. It's sixty pounds per work permit. Yeah. Um, okay. So your uh, so the business does have to apply for it. Uh, and you, they do pay for it. You, uh, yeah, and they do pay for it. Um, but I mean, it's a very lengthy process. Yeah. And, and for example, when I was applying for jobs, um, I was denied twice because. I didn't have a work permit for that specific industry and there were other people that had work permits yeah. so it saved the company from going through that whole ordeal in order to hire me um, and we did find that that was the only thing that was preventing me from getting that job like if I had that work permit I would have been hired immediately yeah um, you see so. um with it's okay when you when you fall into like a specialized niche job um where because uh, the population on the island is very limited um not everyone can do everything so mm -hmm. for certain jobs they do need to bring foreigners in or they do need to be bring people onto the island and mm -hmm. then when it's a job like that, they they don't mind um, applying for the work permit. Like there where I work, they have been advertising it in the local newspapers and Facebook and everything for almost two years to try and find a position uh, to try and find a person who can fill the position. I came along. I showed them uh, like what I can do. I Your gave them my my like my like. Uh, CV and I was perf perfect for the job and the guy basically hired me on 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 the on the what's his name spot because he had been looking for so long and he just couldn't find a Manx resident who had the skill set to do what he needed to do so uh, when like when it, came, yeah okay. so um so when it's a specialized job uh you, it's easier to get a work permit, but for the uh, but for the more general general jobs, yeah. there were always like I was just applying for like an admin position. So. Yeah, so there will always be a Manx 
citizen or a person who doesn't need a work permit mm. who can fill that position. Yeah. So it's very difficult to find a job in that yeah, so scenario. honestly, like if we could give any advice, if you take home anything from these videos, it's please don't fall into the same trap or problem that we face. Know, know that if you are a foreigner and you are coming to the Isle of Man, this is something that is a, a big factor, a big factor. It's not like you're just going to walk into a job or a company or whatever and if they like you they hire you you sign a contract a letter of agreement or whatever it's not like south africa it's not at all um if you went to the uk and you are a south african and they hire you and you've got your you've got a british passport or you've got your visa or whatever and they like you and they hire you no problem you don't need to go through this whole process but if you're moving to the isle of man it's a big thing it is a big thing and the company um if they don't go through the whole work permit which never happens not that i know of um but if they don't do that like like we say the bureaucracy is extremely strict yeah so like no one is going to want to take that risk for you one of the good things that that we haven't mentioned now is that if you a married couple and you yeah. do come over um only one person in that relationship needs to have a full work permit mm. if one person has it both people then are allowed to work yeah so, so i can get a spousal so so you get why it's then in, uh so it's then called a spousal permit uh, which is only valid for one year uh, so every year that will need to be renewed mm -hmm. uh, where my permit uh, is valid for five years I think um, I don't know. in the position that I'm in yeah. um, so I don't need to reapply ever again but with Katia if, if she wants to get a job now because I have a valid permit she can apply for a spousal permit which will be awarded they cannot refuse a spousal permit mm -hmm. um it's just it does cost 60 pounds mm -hmm. um and it's only valid for one year yeah so so take that with a pinch of salt mm -hmm. <laughs> okay number three the driving <laughs> So this, yeah. From day one, I noticed this, and <laughs> it's, yeah. I wouldn't say from day one for me because I didn't have a car from day one. But from day one, when Donovan was out of isolation and we were sort of driving around and exploring the island and stuff, yeah, you can. <laughs> People drive like up your ass. Yeah. They think that they're on the TT. It's, yeah, because because it's the island of the TT, I think everyone thinks <laughs> whether it's car, motorbike, truck, everything, they have to be yeah. on your bum and they <laughs> sit there and <laughs> they won't overtake. Yeah, even when it goes into what's the name? A two lanes. Two lanes. Yeah. They won't overtake you. They'll sit on your bum because <laughs> they don't want to go over the speed limit. Um and oh it, like like so they won't even pull back two or three cars no they're, they're like literally if you had to do a brake check they'd probably smash into the back end. yeah that's how bad it is on the island and it's not one or two times no, that it's happened it it's is literally almost... every single it's it's how they drive yeah it. and the thing is another issue is that they because the island is like quite small there's one road to get to the destination that you are going to so for example if we want to go to tesco in douglas there's one flipping road that you take to go straight to tesco and in that entire 20 minutes or 30 minutes that it takes for us to get there there will be a driver up your bum the entire time and it is the, the most frustrating thing ever and you've got to understand as well we come from Johannesburg, South Africa, which is like the business capital 
of South Africa. We are used to seven lane highways going and taxis and taxis and, and 120 kilometers, you know, speed limit and all of that. Yet <laughs> we moved to an island that's this big and the driving. Oh my goodness. So yeah i'm sorry to say this but it is a con like it is i've noticed that there are a lot of car accidents on the island and it is boiled down to two factors the fact that the roads are extremely windy and narrow of, and narrow um the roads are very small um sometimes in some cases there's only like one road so one so car can one car can fit through that road so sometimes you'll have to like kind of pull over to sort of in the bush and then this other car can pass and then you go, you know. So that's number one. That's the first factor. Second one, I'm so sorry to say this, but it is because you guys drive up each other's asses all the time. And when something like an emergency happens and you slam on brakes, boom, the guy rear ends you. I'm sorry, but it is what it is. So there you go. <laughs> Okay, con number four. The island's pretty small. Yeah, so news travels fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so we knew this coming in that the island is small. Um, I mean, I think it's I don't know off of the top of my no, head, I but know. I think it's forty forty something miles in the longest section and sixty miles yeah. across in. Uh, uh, we in, don't know. <laughs> <coughs> with, um, Sorry. kilometers i'm not sure because here as well like it's not metric it's not in in like imperial it's like a mix be like be like between both some people use metric some people use imperial some people use both metric and imperial in the mm. same sentence and then, then, and then you just like hey like, what? <laughs> hey? what? what are you going on about? come again yeah. it's um so <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, so like, but the island is very small. Um, I mean, you can drive. We're basically on the southernmost tip at the moment now, which yeah. is Port Erin. Uh, I think the only place south of us is Craig, Port St. John. And uh, Craig Nish. Yeah, like Port St. Uh, Port St. Mary's and Craig Nish, which is yeah, literally just down the road, one or yeah. two kilometers away. Yeah. Then you've got the south south side of the island um the cult is what they call it yeah. if we wanted to drive all the way to the north of the, of the island um mm. it'll literally take us 40 minutes mm. an hour at most yeah um, it's not and it's far. not because it's yeah. very far it's because the roads are very narrow and yeah. you might get stuck behind a tractor or like a truck or like something yeah. Yeah. um and the roads are very windy, so you can't go very fast, yeah. especially through uh, the Glen up the mountain road and all of that stuff. Yeah. That's very windy. Yeah, so you probably ask yourself, but how is that a con? Like everything that you've said in that last bit is, it doesn't sound like it's a bad thing. But like we said just now, we come from Johannesburg. You know what I mean? So like because it's so small, there's not a variety of shops and shopping malls and you know so for example if you want to get something like when donovan was coming here i needed to get him a sim card because we were going to go straight into isolation when he arrived and in south africa you can literally go anywhere and you can buy a sim card you can go to spa you can go to kicks you can go anywhere you can go to clothing shops you can go to pep and they'll have sim cards just for an example but yeah there is one shop like i i wanted him on the same network as me which is sure sure network um and there's one shop in the entire island situated in douglas which is the capital town whatever um that sells some cards you know so i had to do this whole trip um just to get this one tiny little thing for him and I, it is only 20 minutes but the thing is i was alone with my two children and it is going, you know, it's it's a 20 minutes for a SIM card. You get my point. So that's what we mean when we say it's small and there's not a lot of variety 
of yeah. like shops and stuff. There's one Tesco, one. There's in, one McDonald's. There's the one market. McDonald's, and that's the only like fast food like sort of joints yeah. that's. And I think there's, there's no like pizza. Two yeah. pizza places. Yeah. There are two Domino's pizzas, one in Onkin and one in Douglas, which are nowhere near us. Yeah. And then, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, like I was saying, if you want fast food outside of Douglas, you're looking at fish and chips. Yeah. And that's it. You know. You're not really going to find I it. mean, yeah. we we eat a lot of, like, junk food, but it's all stuff that we bought either at the co-op or, you know, like the, the pizzas that you put in the oven and stuff. And so. that's another thing uh, is that, so, so if you go to the different towns, you get the co-ops or you get shop rights, um, which are your little 7-Eleven shops yeah but if you want to do a bulk buy mm. again like just just if you want to go back in south africa you got your pick and pays you got mm. okay you got checkers you got macro all of those those are places and there's mm. and you don't have to drive far to to find one no. here on the island there's one and it's a tesco's yeah and it's in douglas yeah so, so that's so that's what we mean when we say it is a bit of a con that it is a small island and therefore there's not a lot of a variety of like things like that. Yeah. So that kind of adds then to con number five, yeah. which is because there's not a lot of land available, um, the land that is available is used for farming and where it's not used for farming and it becomes residential, Obviously, they want to try and pack as many houses into that small area. Yeah. So, the houses are pretty small. Yeah, but um, it, this is also like the UK. I mean, you know, if you had to compare it to South Africa, um, and I'm going to say this and whatever, but South Africans are spoiled, spoiled with their houses. I mean, South Africans have the pools, the larpers, the bra areas, big bedrooms the big lounges and it's like even in a complex where you guys would think okay that's a, that's a small place it's not it's actually really really big you've got a big garden in a complex you've got your pool and everything you know um so south africans are very very spoiled with their houses and the costs as well it is very very expensive to rent yeah, very expensive, and the UK, you know. Okay. Um, so six. Okay, six. Con number six. Um, people <laughs> in South Africa are very spoiled again when it comes to cheap labour. Yeah. Um, for an example. If you want to put in petrol here, you don't, uh, you go to the garage, you can sit in your car waiting for a petrol, petrol attendant, you're going to be sitting there all day. Here, you put in your own petrol. Yeah. If you put up to a garage, you put your petrol in, you walk into the shop, you pay. They, yeah. they then tell you how much you used and, yeah. and you pay. Yeah. Uh, if you want to clean your house, don't you, you yeah. clean your house. If you want someone to clean your house for you, you're going to pay. Yeah. It's very also, expensive. yeah, like um, in South Africa, I used to take my car for a wash twice a month, mm. um, and it was like fifty rand to get your car washed, and it was like it was so nice, you know. Um, I'm I'm the type of person that I love my car, and Donovan loves our cars to be clean. It's just we feel that your car is your second biggest investment that you'll ever make in your life. First one being a house. And so, you look after it. Don't live with chips and shits all over the beep. Not the same. Especially <laughs> when you have kids. Yeah. Um, kids are dirty. They are. <laughs> they're messy. Kids are dirty you and know? they're messy. And so, yeah, it's a luxury to have your car cleaned. It's a luxury. It is very expensive. It's 50 pounds. Um, that's just one place that I saw. Apparently, it can go up to seventy pounds um, to get your car cleaned. Seventy pounds converted to rands is like three hundred rand oh, more, more five five hundred. Well, f fifty pounds converted converted to rand, you're looking at about a thousand rand. 
or whatever. So, Just for 50 pounds. Yeah, so, okay, so I'm way off. Um, but yeah, that for a car wash. So, things like that where South Africans are very spoiled with cheap labor and it all boils down to um, the unemployment rate is very high in South Africa. So, there's certain things are created for jobs and for people to work to earn a living mm. because, you know. So, and, here, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like. Like it's a con, especially coming from South Africa where you had this readily available. Yeah. Coming here and having to do everything yourself. Yeah. Um, is a bit of an adjustment. Yeah, it's an adjustment, you know. Um, we're learning every step of the way. So, mm. yeah. Having said that, brings us to our next point. Number seven. <laughs> <laughs> Is nursery school nursery school fees oh yeah. my goodness normal school fees is fine yeah. because it's free once they Everything reach a certain age once they yeah. reach four years old then you get what's called a school credit so then that is go it goes towards your children's education prior to that oh my goodness yeah so basically we looked at sending the kids to a couple of schools um and yeah the one thing um it's very expensive it was like, 50 pounds a day for yeah, aaron a day and it was 40 pounds for mia a day a day so basically we were looking at paying 800 pounds for one child to attend school nursery school full time we've got two that would have been like what uh, over a thousand six hundred thousand six hundred pounds which is... the average salary on the island ranges from a thousand pounds to whatever so it would have cost us money with both of us working it would have cost us money to send both our children to nursery school um Again, in South Africa, when we sent our kids to nursery school, honestly, it was like the cheapest thing on our budget. Like, we didn't spend a lot on schooling at all. It's not to say that we sent our children to rubbish schools, not at all. Our kids absolutely love their school. I love their school. Um, they look after your children as if they were their own. Um so honestly it that's been a big adjustment as well i've always been a worker i've always been someone that brings home money and um my kids have always gone to school it's a thing in south africa where moms get three months maternity leave dads get now i think it's two weeks mater paternity leave um and after that your kids go to nursery school and you go to work and that's just not the case yeah um so having to be a stay-at-home mom, it is it is an adjustment because obviously now there is only one salary, and it's it you know one salary for four four of us. So it's a, it's kind of like a catch twenty two, um, but it literally is just for a few years until our kids get the free education and then yeah. But. Um... You can easily live on a salary for a four, where um, because so much other stuff is um, easily available, free, cheaper, yeah. um, like medical, you don't pay for medical, so that's not something that comes off for your salary at the end of the month. Yeah, medical uh, aid. Yeah, medical aid. Um, schooling later on. Um, like entertainment. Trans in transport terms of... is cheap and all of that stuff. Yeah. But. Um, like like when you take your kids to the beach you're able to do that you can take your kids to the playgrounds you're able to do that it's all for free it's all for free yeah so, yeah so you know you kind of have to look at it it's you know you've got to try and see the benefits and just to give you an idea if you look at a straight conversion of what we paid for nursery schooling for the two kids back in south africa compared to what it cost yeah um say here it equated to i think because there was a five percent discount because we have uh, two kids mm. it came up to a thousand five hundred pounds a month 
if we had to send the kids here. Straight conversion as to what we pay back in South Africa, 150 pounds a month. Yeah. So, yeah, looking back in South Africa, we were paying, I think, about 3,800 pounds, I mean, rands, rands for both a month of our for kids. both our kids yeah. to go to the good school. Full day. Full day. Meals included. The same thing here, you're looking at mm -mm. paying almost 40,000 rand a month. For your kids for two kids to go to nursery school for yeah. four day, uh, oh, for, full. For like four day. yeah expensive it's very expensive <laughs> so yeah so please also if you are thinking about immigrating and you do have small children just know that yes in the long run it will be better your children will go to university for free that was one of the the, the main one of the big things as to why we moved here was varsity fees in south africa university fees are frightfully expensive i mean if my daughter came to us and said we you know she wants to be a lawyer or a doctor or aaron decides he wants to be whatever we wouldn't have the funds to put them through all of that you know and i wasn't okay with that that didn't sit well with me i didn't want to be like you you're not supposed to hold your children back you're supposed to help them fly and you know that was a big thing for us i i know that i wanted to provide the best life and education shouldn't be compromised you know because of money or whatever um so yeah <laughs> okay um so basically we put number eight with that where everything is expensive uh, entertainment as well is quite expensive i mean to go to a restaurant is very expensive to go out mm. to a pub i mean okay Which is like, a this is already taking quite long so no, but... so uh, um, to give you an idea again i can go down to the co-op which is more expensive than tesco's and <laughs> say say i buy a, f a four pack of guinness uh at the co-op i'm looking at about four pounds so it works out to about mm. a pound per like beer which isn't too bad no. if i go to the pub and i order a guinness mm. it's five pounds for one for one yeah that's it's it's very expensive it's, yeah <laughs> entertainment and eating out and all of that is very expensive and that's another thing where we were quite spoiled in south africa every month Donovan and I, when he, when we got paid, every single month we would go out for dinner, we would go to Spur, we would ocean go basket, for drinks, ocean baskets, go restaurants, pub. go to the bar, um, the kids would get takeaway as well, um, so we are very, South Africa is very spoilt in that regard as well, here it's just, I mean, we went, we've been out once to a restaurant and that was for my birthday. Um, we didn't even buy drinks. We bought our own drinks because the restaurant was not licensed to sell alcohol. However, you were allowed to bring your own. Which um, is a good thing because the yeah. amount that we drank, our bowl probably would have yeah. been in the hundreds so of So I brought, <laughs> it, as part of my birthday presents, um, we were given two bottles of wine and uh, Donovan got beers. And so we literally only ordered food. Um, I think you had a lasagna. I had calzone. a calzone. And did we have a starter? I don't know. No, we, didn't. we didn't. We literally ate two. One, two. And that came up to 34 pounds. 34 pounds. No drinks. Simple meals. That's it. So 34 pounds. What's the conversion with that? Hello. Yeah, so it's a About lot of money. Sorry, battery died. <laughs> Had a bit of a technical issue. <laughs> yeah. um, but, but we're just going to go to the next point. Yeah, so you, so you get the idea. Okay, so con number nine. Um, this one affects me quite a bit. Uh, I knew it would. Uh, coming from South Africa. Um, 
but uh, it's a little bit worse than what I thought when I got you. And that's the um, the amount of wildlife uh, that you see around is almost next to nothing. Um, I've been involved in a lot of wildlife research, um, butterflies, birds, reptiles, especially that's my main focus. Um, spiders bugs blah 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 um fish i've i've always been around wildlife my whole life uh and and i'm always picking up rocks looking to find what i can find underneath or going through trees or rotten logs and everything looking in rock pools at the beach to see what's available or mm. like what's around um <clears throat> we're here um i mean there's a lot of beautiful places to go to the forests and all of that stuff um, but what I've noticed is when you go to the forests you may see a robin uh, <laughs> and that's the only decent bird the rest there's crows everywhere oh, well boy. ravens there are ravens or crows whatever and it seagulls. is <laughs> and seagulls yeah. and I don't know. Seagulls are like vermin. Yeah, yeah I don't okay. know what the little blackbird is. I'd have to find out what it is. Um, Partridge. It's, it's like a crow, but it's a little bit smaller. I say it's out. a starling, but apparently it's no, not. No, it's too big to be a starling. I was actually looking at one today. Okay. Uh, the magpies are quite beautiful, though. Yeah. Uh, very, 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 very pretty birds. But yeah, um, that's basically all you get. Uh, even when I go into the forests or into, I uh, go on walks and stuff uh, and, I f and I find a nice big rock or a nice log and I flip it over to see what bugs or something I can find underneath. Mm. And all there ever is is slugs. Mm. <laughs> Ma the once there's been a couple of spiders, um, other times a couple of millipedes. But it's mainly just slugs, yeah. not even snails, slugs. That's yeah. it. It's like, so, you know, in South Africa, like, you pay money to, like, go to the Kruger National Park and all of that. And you see all this incredible wildlife. And like I was saying when we were prepping for this, like, one of the things that I absolutely loved in South Africa was, like, a summer's evening where it's really hot and you've got the door open and you can hear the crickets you can hear the frogs in the distance you can hear the wildlife you can the even hear birds. owls yeah, yeah you know so that is something that we miss we miss it is something that you know for us it is a con um we used to take our kids around looking at all the different animals and all of that and it's just not something that we can do here and Mia for example she loves it she loves finding creepy crawlies and different different animals I mean when she was a baby she knew how to say animals she knew you know words and all of that because it was so prominent in our life um so yeah it is something that we do miss we're not saying that yes we lived in johannesburg and there was a lion in the streets we're not saying that um we're just saying that from it being so prominent to coming here and not having any of it it is an adjustment yeah yeah unless you can't sheep as and cows. Like a wild animal <laughs> there's millions of them yeah there. and horses and cows yeah. Yeah. cows the cows are a few horses are a few but sheep oh my yeah God, is so many and sheep. just so you know so <laughs> on the front page of the newspaper when i got here the front page was there was a dead sheep in the road i was like Okay, is that front page like <laughs> worthy? <laughs> People were devastated. Yeah, it was devastating. So, so <laughs> funny. But yeah, but shame. Poor sheep died. Yeah. No man, shame. Okay, so the last one is a bit of a touchy subject. But we are going to bring it we up. We are going to bring it up. Um, and yeah 
are. So again, like a disclaimer, nothing is said to be offensive in any way whatsoever. Now, on our previous video where we were talking about the pros of the island, one of the pros that we spoke about were was about the Manx people and the people living on the island being very proud to be Manx yeah. and very proud of the island. Now, when we spoke about it as a pro, we brought up things that it did, that it helped and it worked for it the island. It benefits and it, the and island. It benefits the We're island. able to live here and live in a beautiful place. However, yeah. <laughs> too much of something can be bad for you. Yes. So, having said that, people here are very defensive and very protective and very um yeah defensive like you can't say anything bad negative about negative whatsoever i'm sure if somebody had to watch my video now and any of the pros and or, sorry any of the cons prior to this what we had spoken about someone has gotten offended with what yeah. we said someone has guaranteed so I'm sorry if that is the case, but that just highlights the point that we're making now in that you can't say anything bad about yeah. the island. There's and it's not that we're attacking the people no. or like bringing it up in like a hardcore way. We're Antagonizing just, way. Sometimes we'll just notice something yeah. and we either ask it in a, in a question to a person who actually lives here about, listen, this is what we've noticed. The driving. Um, yeah, example. so the drivers are always driving up your ass. Yeah. Uh, they become like, they Boom. immediately shut, shut you down, down. Yeah. and start becoming very defensive as yeah. to why that person was like doing it. They don't know them from a bar of soap yeah. or even know why he was driving like that. But it's like, no, 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 no. The, 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 uh, yeah. He was doing it for a reason or that's how yeah. they drive or you were driving too slow or you were doing something wrong. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. And we just... Saying it's something. just something that we've picked up mm. and the fact that we are foreigners as well plays a big big factor it is a big factor plays mm. a big role um in that well don't come to don't live here in the isle of man if you have these issues um but that's another thing that we spoke about in south africa there's a lot of problems there's a lot of flaws there's a lot of issues however south africans have learned the ability to kind of embrace it make fun laugh about it you know no place is perfect no place anywhere in the world is perfect every place has their issues um but in particular in south africa I mean, you've got comedians, South African comedians, that we joke about it. We joke about our presidents and, you know, or the previous one, not the current one. And, you know, um, it's just something that we have noticed. And it, it's been a bit difficult to kind of adapt to that. Um, because when you bring up yeah. an issue that you're having with the island the people don't want to hear it yeah they don't want to hear it they want to talk about it it doesn't exist it's never happened there's these sort of blinkers, blinkers that you know um to block out the good like yeah, i mean to, um, block, out to any block out the bad, bad like they you know? only want to see the good yeah. and they only believe that there is good and i mean it's also like it's not always it's not just manx i mean i've got South Af I've met South Africans as well that have been living here for many years now and are so 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 defensive over the island and it's it's it sometimes is a little bit difficult it really really is like for example when we were talking about the schooling and the cost of schooling or whatever I've, I've been like personally sort of attacked you know when I, I've brought that up and Again, like I'm not criticizing. We none of us are criticizing it. I'm not saying it's garbage 
that the schooling, nursery school is so expensive and it's rubbish. And that's not what I'm saying. Like we said, we come from a place where it has always been relatively cheap. And so coming here to hear that it's 40,000, the equivalent of 40,000 Rand a month, it's like, you know. So, but again, it's like I'm not criticizing it, but however it was interpreted as a I was criticizing, you know what I mean? So, yeah, very, very, very defensive, um, very protective, and don't really like to look at or even acknowledge the fact that there are issues, you know. And I, again, we're sorry if that then becomes a little bit offensive. But it is true, it is true. And you know, a friend of mine that lives here who is South African, um, she's been here for like six years or something, she also puts put certain things into perspective for me when I did bring it up with her, in that um, you know, again, I'm sorry for how this is gonna sound, but you know, it's kind of like people are in a little bit of a bubble here. I mean, for example, they I was told that there's some people that haven't even left Douglas because why do they need to leave Douglas? Tesco is there. You've got Strange Streets, which has all the shops there. Like they, they had no reason to leave Douglas. Yeah, they're like 40 years old. They were yeah. born in Douglas. Yeah. They've lived their whole life in Douglas and they'll never leave Douglas. They, they haven't yeah. even driven yeah. to the south of the island. Yeah. Because why do they need why? to drive so far? Yeah, you know. <laughs> and it's like, I mean, I can walk to the south of the island. Yeah. It's, yeah. It'll take me four hours, but I'll probably walk that distance. Yeah. So, you know, there's a saying here um, that if you do speak bad or what they consider bad, that there's a boat waiting for you in the morning, which means like hop on the boat and go if you don't like it, you know. Um, but so, that's the like, thing is, yeah. is that we're not trying to tell the people that that we don't like it. Sometimes yeah. you're just bringing up an observation that you've made and you're comparing. I mean, we're new to the country, so we will make a lot of comparisons between what we had and what we now have. Yeah, or and, what we don't have. Yeah. <laughs> and what we gave up. It's just, it's a coping mechanism for a, for a person who has just made that big move, um, yet they just it's don't just, see it it's as not allowed. that. They, it's they, not allowed. Yeah, they yeah. become so offended yeah. and so defensive. If mm. you just, if if I just like say, say like, yes, see, there's a lot of flies here today, mm. they start talking about, I, I, I don't know, they'll go on about something <laughs> as to why yeah. today there is allowed to be so many flies. Yeah. It's like, don't talk bad about the flies. Yeah. It's like, you just it's very not difficult. say anything bad. Yeah, it's very, very difficult. Um, you know, so like we said, too much of something does become a negative. It's wonderful. It really is wonderful that people here are very proud of the island. We chose to move here and so we are like having to sort of adapt and learn the ways of the island and all of that but um you know it's sometimes you do kind of feel like people do get impatient as well with us like in that regard um <laughs> so i'm sorry if you have gotten a little bit offended by that but we said we were going to speak the truth we're not going to sugarcoat anything this is from our perspective and um, if somebody is watching this and is considering moving to the Isle of Man, I would always like to be as truthful and honest as possible. And that is something that we have experienced. So, so yeah. But I think we're going to end the vlog here because, again, we've kind of rambled on a little bit. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, watching. <laughs> I truly do appreciate it. Um, give this video... A thumbs up if you enjoyed it and again if you have any questions um, drop them in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to answer it but thank you so much for watching and keep well
Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>